Hi, I'm Gemma from Calligraphy Gems, and today I am with Dina from Dina Calligraphy. So Dina, would you like to introduce yourself today? Yeah, so my name is Dina. I'm based in Vancouver, Canada. It's a beautiful place. Everyone should come visit when, if you have the chance. Um, and for the past two-ish years, I've been running a calligraphy and a coaching business full-time. So before that, I was I started a calligraphy business on the side. Um, eventually I quit my job and this is just like a super long story short later, we could like go into the details if you want. Um, but in the past two years, I have mainly built a calligraphy business based on teaching workshops. And right now during the pandemic, it's mainly been teaching team building corporate workshops. And then the other side of my business is coaching calligraphers around the world on how to start and grow a calligraphy business. So I have some so I have a group coaching program called the Calligraphy Business Accelerator, and I used to do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Now I don't do much of that. I'm mainly focusing just on the group program, um, mm -hmm. and I also have a YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> and that's why I brought Dina onto my channel is because I was part of one of Dina's programs. So I believe coaching is very valuable, and today we're going to go into the experience as a coachy. I don't know if that's the official term, and also what it's like for Dina as a coach. So yeah, we're gonna get into I'm very it. excited. Yeah. I've never um, been, I I'm always the one interviewing my past coach. Well, you could say coaches or students or clients. I say mm -hmm. stu students or clients mainly. So it this is really cool that now one of my past students is interviewing me. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm speaking to a teacher. <laughs> no. Um Cool. Okay, so as part of your program, you have worked with lots of calligraphers. So how, well, do you want to give an overview of your program, first of all, how your calligraphy business accelerator works, or how it will work in the future, because I know it's changing? Yeah, for sure. So the Calligraphy Business Accelerator is a four-month group coaching program for calligraphers, and there are basically three levels of support. Um, there are group coaching calls with me. There are a bunch of resources. So these are like video lessons, documents, like templates and like contracts, um, a bunch of resources. Mm -hmm. And then there's the community sp uh, support, which comes in the form of, it used to be a Facebook group, but now it's going to be a Slack channel. Mm -hmm. So there's three levels of support. And the purpose of the program is to help calligraphers who are just starting out with their business and they're really struggling with the business side of things because like a lot of calligraphers are just so good at calligraphy. They're so good at the art, but a lot of calligraphers don't have a business background. And so like in my first year um, starting my calligraphy business, I met some other calligraphers who were just really struggling with the whole business side of things like the marketing and the social media and how do you register your business and pricing and everything. And because I do have a business background and I worked in business, I found it okay for myself. I did struggle a bit too, but even for myself, I wished I had like a program that could teach me like step-by-step, step, okay, this is what you do and this is how you be successful. And so um, when I started to become a coach, so about two years ago, um, I wanted to create something like this. And so now the Calligraphy Business Accelerator has gone through four rounds, so four cohorts. And coming in October, I'm actually changing it up to like more of a like a ongoing enrollment. So it'll be kind of like a monthly cohort. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure Gemma will put the link in the description yeah. <laughs> if, if you want to have, have like the full details. Yeah. And um, I. So I actually have a business background. So I studied business and management at university, but I was still like a headless chicken <laughs> um, with my business because calligraphy has so much potential and so many options. Like there's niches within niches. And I think on the program, sorry, my cat's just coming in through the cat. <laughs> That's okay. On, on the program, like it just does help focus you. Um, yeah, like because it is structured in a way where you have like the modules and then you have the calls, it kind of guides you along and helps you focus down, um, particularly with the niching. Um, that was really helpful to me to mm -hmm. actually focus because I felt all over the place. 
Yeah. Yeah. Gemma, I'm curious, you mentioned, so you, you do have a business background and I have a business background too, but I think for a lot of people who go through business school and work in business, like we, we don't learn about how to start our own business. It's all Mm -hmm. about like, how do you help this company do the marketing or the accounting or the finance and whatever they don't teach you. How do you do it yourself? So even though like we both have a business background, sometimes it's not that helpful. (laughs) Yeah, I did find that. And actually the reason why I went to university and studied business is because I always love the idea of running a business. But then because it was more corporate, I ended up finding myself going down more of a corporate path until I realized that actually that wasn't my goal. Mm -hmm. So I had to kind of pull myself back. Um, But yeah, you are right that I don't think they prepare you to actually run a business. Yeah. And there's so much to cover when you run a business. um, Yeah. That the program really helps. (laughs) Like you I'm need glad a to hear that. Like that to help you. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so I've got how my business has changed. So, oh. I think I've briefly covered this that I was all over the place. So, I was offering wedding calligraphy workshops. I was doing YouTube, a Facebook group. I was looking at Pinterest. I was offering custom pieces. I was doing all social media things, and I just did not. Like I felt like I was trying to do everything at once and nothing was working because mm-hmm. I was like too scattered. But since the program, like I've niched down into teaching, I would say that's my niche. And within kind of the smaller niche, I do workshops and I've just launched a workbook recently as well. So I'm hoping to um, do workbooks alongside those. So I think having a niche has definitely helped me focus more in my business. And actually I have seen my my revenue increase because I have had that focus so yeah oh and I guess the biggest point is that I quit my job (laughs) that's quite a big milestone that I've just forgotten about um yeah but you made that you made that decision before you joined the program you kind of knew you wanted to do it but then you you thought okay this is like perfect timing the program is like these four months and I'll quit my job in the middle Mm -hmm. hopefully this program will help me build it up Mm -hmm. to the point where like I can quit my job and it'll be better. Yeah. So yeah, I had decided to leave my job before I come across the program, but I hadn't handed in my notice yet. Mm -hmm. I decided that I would give myself around six months to kind of plan and prepare. And then I seen the, about the calligraphy business accelerator and timing wise, it ended around the time I was planning to actually be independent as a calligrapher. So I thought, is this a sign? Like it fits in perfectly and it has like all the content I want and the community support. So yeah, I went for it. And actually I left my job earlier than I planned. Yeah. Um, I think (laughs) as I started to settle into the program and started seeing more results and felt more confident and focused, my cat has just jumped up on the table. Um, sorry that was like a big sidetrack I can't remember I think I was talking about my my job yeah you were saying Um, how you quit earlier than you expected because everything was going well yeah Um, and then the community support and that so I know that not everyone that joins the program will quit their job I don't recommend like everyone quits their job but for me it it fit in perfectly and it was definitely kind of that push that I needed to to really do it because for me as well once I tell people I'm going to do it it kind of pushes me to do it yeah you don't want to go back on your word yeah exactly so yeah so Gemma um you mentioned that you found the program really useful because you decided on your niche was there anything else was there any anything else that you found really useful about the program Mm. yeah that really helped you like even now maybe yeah well um community wise I knew that there was a community aspect of the program and that was like part of the big draw for me but I didn't know how valuable that would be Um, I thought it would be more 
of kind of like a business relationship with these other calligraphers mm. and it would be helpful but it would be more formal but actually like we ended up becoming friends <laughs> and like being each other's like support system and that side of things has been absolutely amazing and like there's been like ups and downs like over the last few months and they've really been there and really like picked me back up and yeah, you know I hope awesome. I could do the same for them as well like when they're struggling with something or yeah it's just been that like that's definitely been the favorite part of my program is yeah just gaining these friends that also can help me with my business <laughs> Yeah. And yeah. they can help you even after the program is done. Yeah. Right now I'm in a group coaching program. Um, and like, I know when the program ends, like I, you, you kind of lose access to the coach. Like you can't really ask the coach any mm -hmm. questions and you don't have meetings with the coach, but because the program I'm in is like a group program. There's, there's about 12 people with me. And so I know that after the program is done, I, I still have like these 12 people I can mm -hmm. rely on. And maybe we'll still have like regular, I don't know, maybe monthly meetings or something and we can still support each other. Mm. So yeah, I think that's like a really big like value add when it, yeah. when, when it's like a group coaching program, I think yeah. that's like the biggest value from a group mm. coaching program, even yeah. though you have less access to the coach during the program, but you can rely on the community so much more. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Agree. I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> Before we continue, I'm just going to close my blind. Can you see it on my face? I, like the sun? Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> yeah, this is only my second, I guess, YouTube interview. So I'm still not like as smooth as I would like to be. Um, yeah. I, I think it's phone. great so far. Oh, good. <laughs> only yeah. one cat interruption. When I was with Deja yesterday, I had three. <laughs> I was so embarrassed, but um, yeah. Maybe That's so week. funny. I mean, maybe, I think people would find it funny if you included part of the, maybe like, like maybe one cat interruption. Yeah. In the, in well, the video. Well, last so time, last night, my, because of, you know, Snowy was injured. Yeah. Um, we had to keep the cats in and normally the outdoor cats. So they were getting very angry and like restless. <laughs> angry oh. isn't the right word but they were definitely getting restless and yeah and then Frankie threw up in like three different places and I'm like this is, why is this happening now <laughs> I was like Deja I'm so sorry <laughs> wait she so Frank Frankie threw up during the the time you were yeah interviewing Deja yeah oh yeah so yeah so community has been just so invaluable to me um and like you said like it's valuable to you as well so I think kind of whatever stage of your business you're at like there's always going to be some benefit from it yeah and you know the people that you participate on these courses with whether you're at my level when you're starting out or you're further in your journey like you are you're going to be paired with people that are kind of in a similar stage with you. Mm -hmm. So you'll see each other grow and you'll be able to support each other as you grow as well, which I think is really nice. Yeah. 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 I never thought of it that way. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So one of the questions I have for you, Dina, is what are the benefits of a group coaching course compared to one to one coaching? Yeah. Um, so I have been part of both like group coaching and I've had multiple one-on-one -on -one coaches. And then I myself have like, I've offered one-on-one -on -one and a group coaching. Yeah. So I kind of have like the perspective from both the student and the coach side. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll talk about it. I'll talk about it from the student perspective. Cause I think that, yeah. Cause um, I think that just makes more sense. Um, so I, I really love both. Um, I think when I was just starting out, I invested more in one-on-one -on -one coaches because I thought, okay, I need the custom support. I need more. I need someone to like hold my hand and do everything and tell me, you need to do this. You need to do that. And this is how you do everything. Um, and so at that time, when I was just starting uh, my coaching business, that's when I hired my first coach. And it was, it was just so, so amazing, um, like the experience working with her. Um, and so I think the, 
biggest benefit is that it's just very customized. Like that person is working with you one-on-one, helping you with your specific problems, like the whole time. Um, and then when I started to join group coaching programs, so this was maybe a couple of months after I started working with like a one-on-one coach, um, the group coach, the group coaching programs are very different. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's like a main coach and there's like usually 10 to 20 people in, in the programs. And I found that I get less personalized support from the main coach. And I think I get less support also just in general, in terms of advice for my business on Mm -hmm. what to do. But what I found really helpful is like, I get so, okay, because there's so many other people and everybody kind of has a different business. Maybe we're in a similar stage or maybe we're, uh, I don't know, maybe we're all like service providers and we all want to make, let's say $10,000 a month or something. Everybody has like a different, maybe they're in a different industry or niche, Mm -hmm. but we're all kind of on the same path. Yeah. Um, and so it's really interesting to meet other people and hear what they're doing and hear different perspectives. And they also give me like different ideas for what I can do. Um, so I think that's the biggest part, like just yeah. like, okay, if I could show it in a visual format, like if you're in a group coaching program, it's, this is what happens. <laughs> <laughs> like your mind is just like this. And then yeah. if it's a one-on-one program, it's like focus mm-hmm. on you. Um, and yeah, and, and then we, meant, we we talked about this before, but with the group coaching program, after the program is done, like I'm still getting help from those people who are in my program, not mm-hmm. the head coach, but like the other like group mates. So I think that is so, so valuable. And like they're friends. Now they're, I, I've made like friends all around the world. Mm-hmm. And I think that is really cool. Yeah. So I, I think there's definitely a lot of differences, but depending where you are in your business, you can either consider the one-on-one if you really want like more personalized help. And then if you kind of know what you're doing already, but then you want to grow and have more perspectives and have new ideas and also have a community, then that's where I think people could can consider like a group coaching program. Yeah. 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 I, I oh, agree. and one more thing. Yeah. Um, I know I the the program that I offer, the calligraphy business accelerator, it it's for calligraphers who are just starting out. And so I know I just said, okay, if you're just starting out, do one-on-one coaching, but if you're just starting out, I think group coaching is also very good as well, because um, like right from the get go, you have a community and depending on the group program, like if it's very, very niche. So for example, mine's like super niche. It's for calligraphers. There are like certain steps that most calligraphers will take in starting a business. So Mm -hmm. doing the business registration, doing your social media website, and then you can do your pricing and networking and Uh, and everything like that. So depending on what kind of a business you're starting, if you can find a group coaching program that is specific to that kind of business, Mm. then I think that's very valuable as well. Also group coaching is like way cheaper than one-on-one coaching. Yeah. (laughs) So that's, that's another benefit. I think as well for me, um, when I took part in the program, I was kind of anyone doing like the workshop niche but it means that I have other contacts doing different things in the industry so for example yeah doing these YouTube collaborations like Mm -hmm. I can bring people that have different specialities and you know like you can make connections like you connected me with another calligrapher another Canadian calligrapher um, Candice Mm -hmm. and we meet every week now oh and, that's awesome yeah because you both have we, a youtube pardon you both have a youtube yeah i'm gonna speak yeah. to her later and, about bringing her on as well <laughs> um and yeah like cats. it just kind of all connects like even if you're not on the exact same path like you're still in the same industry and there's still ways that you can work together um so i think there's always value in yeah, yeah working with people like you said obviously the people I worked with were still in the calligraphy industry but in different kind of areas and like you said you were still able to gain support from other people that were in different industries Mm -hmm. yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I think the community, like just meeting new people opens up so many doors. Mm. Yeah. And I think for me, like, as someone who has left their dog and speaks to no one other than the cats, like if I if I didn't, well, I have my boyfriend, but besides him, um, like having these kind of check ins with other calligraphers is yeah like, so nice, just on a personal level. To yeah, I think it just makes my business smoother, like to meet up with other people, even mm-hmm. if like we're on different sides of the world like now (laughs) yeah I agree and I I think it also makes like for me when I was when I was doing the one-on-one coaching when I was uh when I had a one-on-one coach sometimes I felt it's not like I was lonely but like I kind of felt like I was do I was just doing it by myself Mm. and I think a lot of mindset problems that I had were about oh like um um like okay I can't think of something specific like a specific example, but in the group coaching, I felt like my motivation was there the whole time because mm. everybody was doing it. Yeah. But then with the one-on-one coach, I felt like I had a lot of motivation problems. Like, I don't know if I can do it. And so I was always bringing that up with my coach. Like, yeah. I just don't know if I can do this, yeah. but I found that with the group coaching because everybody else was trying to do the same thing. Then like my motivation was always there. And I knew other people were going through the same thing as me. So I don't know if you found that as well or. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've all, I think all of the, the entire group, like we've all had ups and downs as we've gone through the program. Like it's not caused by the program, but just as we've been working on growing our businesses, mm-hmm. you naturally get like ups and downs, but we've all been there to kind of like pick each other back up. And like, yeah, and really celebrate wins as well when we have wins in our business. Because I think when you're working on these things by yourself and you achieve something, sometimes it's more like, okay, that's done. But actually, mm-hmm. sometimes having the community going, that's actually amazing. Like, don't underestimate how how great that is. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's really valuable as well to keep your motivation going long term. Yeah. 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 So you you mentioned obviously you've been part of coaching programs like how did you make that decision to invest in yourself because I know that you've invested a a lot in coaching so how did you make that decision and decide it was worth it for your business Mm -hmm. yeah so I hired my first coach when I was about to start the coaching business so I did the calligraphy business by myself Um, I did struggle a lot, but I felt like I could do it with everything that was on the internet. Um, So when I quit my job in 2019 summer, I knew that I wanted to start a coaching business, but for like eight months, I didn't do anything because I was just so scared. Like I had so many limiting beliefs and I had imposter syndrome and I thought, oh my gosh, who am I to be a coach when I've only quit my job like one month ago? (laughs) So like, I didn't know if I could do it. And so like a couple months passed, I still, I kept saying to my friends and family, like, oh, I'm going to have the online coaching business. I'm going to do the online stuff. Um, And in February of 2020, so this was before the pandemic hit in Canada. um, That's when I was thinking, okay, like, I think now is the time. It's been like eight months since I quit my job. If I don't do it now, then like, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. And I, and because I wanted to be a coach, like I knew that coaching was really valuable, but actually I never had a coach before. And so I thought, okay, I'm, I want to be a coach, but I'm scared. And maybe if like, maybe I need a coach to just to see what being coached is like, so I can be a better coach. So then that's when I reached out to, um, to her name is Kristen Kosinski. She was my first one-on-one coach and I was following her for a while Mm -hmm. on Instagram. And so, um, yeah, so I hired her and then with her, like we worked on my limiting beliefs and everything. And then like in a month I launched my coaching. Um, so I launched one-on-one coaching and I got five people who signed Mm -hmm. up Um, and it was a struggle, um, to be honest. Um, but I was just so happy that like I did it. 
and like people were willing to put their money in me. I um, mean, at that time, the, the investment was like way lower than what it is now. If I were to charge for one-on-one coaching. Um, so that's kind of like how I started. Um, but yeah, that would like, without her, I wouldn't be where I am today. Um, so I worked with her for about three months. So I launched the one-on-one coaching. And then in the second month I thought, okay, like what's the next step now? Like I'm having so many meetings with all these calligraphers and they kind of have the same problems. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's do a group coaching program. So that's when I first started the calligraphy business accelerator and she helped me with that as well. Yeah. And I imagine that was such, um, you love this word, limiting belief to overcome because (laughs) you, it's scary. I imagine like putting yourself out there as the expert, like Mm -hmm. to, to get over that is quite difficult. So I think investing in coaching is like a great way to overcome limiting beliefs. Um, Yeah. And And, and it's like, go ahead. I was going to say like in the program, obviously as we're all starting the program we're all kind of nervous and we all suffer with those limiting beliefs so you you as the coach like helped us like work through those as well and I think Mm -hmm. yeah that's where our coach does come in really handy yeah I think with especially with the mindset part like you yes you can find mindset videos and like blogs on the internet but it doesn't really help that much because you can read about it but until you you actually talk about it with somebody. So it could be a coach, it could be a mentor or a friend, like nothing really happens. Cause with like, compared to like a strategic thing, like a task, like anyone can do that. You just do it. But then with the mindset stuff, it's like all in your head and you have to change the way you think about things and you need to change your perspective. So for me, that was like the biggest value I got from my coach, Kristen. Mm-hmm. Um, So another question for you, Dina, is how do you find a coach that works for your business if you do decide to go the one-on-one routes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Um, there's a lot of ways you can find a coach um, and coaches are everywhere and there's so many kinds of coaches. Um, So for me, what I've done, I kind of, I didn't like actively go out and look for a coach. I kind of just, I don't know, I just followed some people and maybe they would share about another person and then I would just click into the other person and follow them. Um, so the way I found, well, the way I found my first coach, I was just, I was just following her because uh, there was somebody else I was following who shouted her out. And then I thought, oh, she has cool content. Let me just follow her. And I, at that time, I never thought, oh, maybe I'll hire her as a coach. Like I just found the content useful. Mm-hmm. Um, and then one of my other one-on-one coaches, he was a referral. So I have a friend who worked with him and my friend said, oh, like maybe you should work with this guy. Like he, he's really great. He's really great as a coach. Um, so that's another way. So that was like a referral. And then my other one I found on the internet, like through her blog, cause I was just searching like how to do something. And then I found her website and then I clicked into the work with me and I saw, oh, coaching. Um, so I think, I think, so for anyone who's trying to find a coach, there's a lot of coaches out there. And I think before you decide to invest in a coach, make sure you know what the coach is talking about. Like, do you like their content and do you like their personality? Like actually one of the coaches I worked with, the one I found online, I feel like I didn't follow her for a long time. I just kind of, okay, let's, let's get coaching and it actually didn't really work out. Like that coach really wasn't a good experience because I didn't know what she was like. I didn't know what her values were. Mm -hmm. And I actually felt like when I shared my goals with her, she kind of, she didn't believe I could do it. Which is not what you need. (laughs) Yeah. And so I, I ended the coaching. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. So I, I think before you put money somewhere, make sure you research, research, yeah. uh, yeah, research it. And this goes for like anything, like if you're going to sign up for a university program, or if you're going to, I don't know, like do something like research it, talk mm-hmm. to people who have worked with them, like look at testimonials, mm-hmm. um, and see if you like them as a person. Yeah. So I guess this kind of naturally leads on to how I found you. <laughs> and <laughs> so I can cross your content from your Facebook group for calligraphy business owners 
and like watched all your content and then mm-hmm. I think I stumbled onto your YouTube channel and then I don't know I basically started following you everywhere and then I was kind of lurking like watching <laughs> all the testimonials like I think I'm gonna like like join the program but I think yeah I did watch every single review <laughs> like even though even though I well, I have a lot of videos like the video <laughs> Maybe not ones every right single one but <laughs> For me, um, like it was a big investment. And yeah, it is. To be honest, I knew I was going to do it. I was just watching these to kind of justify mm. that I was right in my decision. Um, and I agree, I was right in my decision. <laughs> um, so I think, yeah, have a look at review videos as well. And like, yeah. I really enjoyed watching, I think, was it the Instagram lives where you interviewed your yeah I did those as well um I found those really insightful so yeah research is important to understanding whether you like someone and yeah like I would watch your Instagram stories I feel like a bit of a stalker because I'm like I've watched you everywhere (laughs) Dina okay a a lot (laughs) of people are are like that enjoyed your content and the behind the scenes and like the mindset stuff and like you know all that kind of adds up and helps you make a decision so Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad the content I was putting out is like, I guess, first of all, useful. Mm -hmm. um, And then it kind of gave you a sense of like my personality and everything Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. But um, what's interesting is actually, I think half the people who join my programs, like the calligraphy business accelerator, like I never interacted with them before. And they would just like, I would just see a sign up and I would be like, oh, who's this? (laughs) I'm really surprised by that. Yeah, I think half the people, I, I don't know them before. Oh. Yeah. Hmm, but you joined one of the free coaching calls. I joined two. <laughs> oh, did you join two? Okay. Well, you joined on the first two one, I agreed to sign up. But then on the second one, I thought, well, I'm not going to miss a free opportunity to get some yeah. coaching. So, yeah. Yeah. But again, like that was insightful. So if like viewers out there are thinking about this themselves, like join free, you know, like webinars and coaching calls like they're there for you to test the waters as well like not yeah. just to be sold to like they are there for you to see if it's something you would like to continue with so yeah and just to flip this topic back to um like for people who are calligraphers watching this like basically what I did was I gave a sample I gave everybody a sample of what it would be like to work with me and so if you're a calligrapher trying to grow your business a really easy way to do this is to like give people like a sample so so a good example of this is maybe you're at an event um, maybe you have a booth or something or maybe um okay let's say let's say you're at an event and then people come to your booth and then you give them a sample calligraphy bookmark that's like a sample of what it's like to of your calligraphy and and then they get to interact with you a little bit um so that's something for calligraphers to keep in mind um yeah if people get a sample of what it's like working with you they're much more likely to remember you and want to work with you in the future Mm. yeah and something we've not touched upon touched upon that much is networking so I guess that kind of ties in there like getting your face out there and networking with other people is really important and that's like a big chunk of your program as well that I'm only just bringing up now but yeah that's really valuable as well um yeah And then I guess I just have a few questions for you in terms of like your experiences of being a coach for calligraphers. Um, So my first, well, the first was going to be how you ended up as a coach, which you kind of covered, I believe. Um, And then the second one was, what's your favorite part about being a a coach? I just love meeting everybody and like helping them. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I think I get, I'm like, so after each coaching call, I'm like, hi because <laughs> everybody just like it's just it feels very rewarding being able to help people and then see them grow like especially um you know at the, at the beginning of all our calls I asked oh like what are your wins for the week and so whenever that part happens I'm always like oh my gosh like that's so amazing like oh I'm so happy even if it's like a super small win like oh I shared about it on my Facebook on my personal Facebook I shared my calligraphy like it's seeing people take little steps towards their big goals. That's Mm -hmm. what I really love. 
Um, and then it was really cool because when I went to Toronto two weeks ago, I actually got to meet five of my past students. <laughs> I've seen you met three, but you met five. Wow. I met five actually. <laughs> um, and in Vancouver, I've met two of them so far. So whenever I meet, get to like meet them in person and just like chat about like random things, I, it's, it, it's really cool because you kind of build this relationship online mm -hmm. and then um, like I get the pleasure of like supporting them and helping them and then you get to meet them in person and it's like wow like this person is real yeah. <laughs> yeah and I'm sure one day like I'll go to the UK and um yeah we can catch up mm. as well yeah it's, it's a bit further than where you are but <laughs> yeah, yeah one the UK is a very people. popular place for I don't know I guess tourists to go <laughs> what Vancouver is uh the UK is Oh, the UK, yeah. Yeah. Well, it depends. London's a popular place. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I guess I don't know. I don't really know where you are, but I wouldn't mind going. I've been to London like two times. Mm -hmm. um, so I wouldn't mind going out of London. Yeah, well, I live you. in the Cotswolds, which I may be biased, but it's apparently the most beautiful part of England. <laughs> okay well um, I'll come I'll come there and then it, I'll compare that with Vancouver because I think Vancouver is the most beautiful place in Canada well um <laughs> so the Cotswold is very when you picture I imagine like when you picture England and kind of like rustic England it's probably what you picture like there's cobblestone pathways and mm -hmm. like roses everywhere <laughs> And like these little boutique shops and stuff like it's very not all of it's like that not not where I live it's specifically but there are parts of the Cotswolds that are like that so I could take okay. you on a tour <laughs> okay yeah yeah London is so touristy and big like it's just a big city but it's yeah. beautiful like with the river and everything yeah I lived in London for a year and it wasn't the life for me <laughs> I think okay. I'm too much of a cheapskate in all honesty I, I was just like everything's so expensive oh yeah it is yeah. it is yeah but it, I'm so glad like I was able to experience it mm -hmm. kind of see whether I liked it or not mm -hmm. yeah um anyway that was off topic <laughs> um so a question for you actually this is my last question for you is what is your biggest win to date as a calligraphy coach? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really hard. I, I think it's just meeting people and helping them and seeing them, like seeing people like you build the business and then you quit your job and now you're interviewing me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I yeah. think that's the biggest win. Like it, it's really simple, but it's just being able to see people like, do more and like grow and like do what they want to do. I think that's the biggest win. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing, I, I think a, a more personal thing is that um, my biggest win is probably that I have built this online business. And so I can finally um, like achieve my dream. That's like of being a digital nomad after COVID <laughs> happens. Mm -hmm. That was always my dream. Um, <clears throat> like even in university, I was following so many travel bloggers who were like digital nomads and they had like a laptop, uh, laptop lifestyle. And so I made that kind of like a personal dream for me. So that's like my big win is now I have an online business. Um, and I don't do too many workshops right now. I think coaching is like 90% of my income. And then the workshops are like 10%, like mm -hmm. maybe I'll have a corporate workshop once a month or something like that. Mm -hmm. or once every two months but mm -hmm. yeah that's the biggest win the online business part and then I can travel mm -hmm. if I well, want to fingers across that it settles down by early next year and you can go yeah. fly away and <laughs> explore yeah. other places <laughs> the YouTube idea is that you could do a YouTube series calligraphers around the world oh you yeah could, you could go like meet all your past clients and yeah showcase different calligraphers around the world and how you've helped I would love to do that yeah yeah that would be so fun yeah <laughs> yeah um and then I guess where can people find you 
Yeah. Well, I'm all over the place, yeah. as you know. Um, I'm most active on Instagram. Um, so my Instagram is Dina Calligraphy. And then I also, the second most active one is probably YouTube. I have a lot of like resources and content for calligraphers on how to grow a business. So Instagram, YouTube. Um, and then if you're looking for some other resources, I also have a blog on my website and I have a free Facebook group. There's about 700 calligraphers in there, but I have some free trainings. So these are the free trainings that um, you mentioned that you watched you were when you were lurking around. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's the free Facebook group. Um, and yeah, that's that's mainly the big ones. Yeah. And if you so. think of anything else, I can always add it, add it yeah. into the description for you. Sounds good. So, cool. I think that's everything. Um, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Um, and I hope you enjoy getting some rest because I know that's something you're working on right now yeah, well, thank working you so on much. resting but you get what I mean and yeah thank you for joining me